In this video we will create a Warcraft 3 installation where all of the code files are editable and runnable, so you can mod anything. We will want 4 downloads for this video. Warsmash engine source code, Warcraft 3 patch 1.29.2 art files, the Warsmash mod engine alpha download from Hive to get the config and launcher, and the MPQ editor so that we can get art files more easily. First, make a folder where you will put everything. In my example, I call the folder Warcraft 3 open. Second, download the files using a standard internet search. An easy way to download the source code from GitHub is to use the download zip button. Make sure that you get the correct version of Warcraft 3 art files, otherwise this tutorial will not work properly. I put the files in a folder called build. I use this folder to do my manual work to build our stuff. This way, the root directory of Warcraft 3 open can be the main installation when we are done. The first step of building this thing is pretty easy. I unzip everything, and I copy everything from the Warsmash mod engine source code into the root directory. Then is the second step of unzipping, I do something that is slightly less straightforward. In this step, I copy the Warsmash launcher binary and its INI config file into our game build. This makes things easier later on. Now I am looking at the config file. We must change this file so that locating the game art files is simple, and easier to mod, by removing the need for the MPQ files. So, I change the list of data sources to only load data from two locations, and I change the type so that both locations are a folder. The first folder will be all resources for the game, and the second folder will be the maps folder. Including maps folder as one of these root directories will cause the maps to show in the custom game menu. I will leave the default multiplayer server as warsmash.net, so that my game installation can be copied to other computers and used for multiplayer by using the default server. Now I remember that this config file is in the wrong place. The config file must be located in the core assets directory, which will be the working directory of the application once it starts up. Also, because I am using the Warsmash EXE from the Hive Alpha client, this launcher is hard-coded to always launch from a bin folder that I do not have. So I will make a tiny one-line batch script in the bin folder that will actually launch the Gradle run game command, as shown here. Now I have a good Warsmash setup but I do not have any of the art files. So I need to go and get the Warcraft 3 art files.
If you did not already download the MPQ editor, now is a good time to do so. I will use the MPQ editor and set my default extract location to the resources directory, so that it will fill up with all of the art resources from the Blizzard game that I can then put as input to War Smash Engine. Extracting all of the art also means that if I want to modify any individual file, it will be easy for me to find and modify the specific file. This helps to create a cohesive creative space where I can mod anything and then relaunch the game immediately to test the change. Remember that you must extract all 5 MPQ files in the correct order. If you extract in an incorrect order, you may break your configuration and overwrite the Frozen Throne expansion files with the Reign of Chaos original game files. Once you have extracted all the MPQ files, you want to also go and get the map files from the maps folder, or maybe some other map files if you want to use other maps of your own. The maps need to go in the resources slash maps folder, so that they will be available in the custom games menu which does not handle opening folders yet on this version. Now that you have created the most free 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 super moddable Warcraft 3 open game version of freedom and liberty where every single file used in the function of gameplay is here in the folder for you to hack however you want, you should try double clicking on the War Smash EXE to launch your game and play it. It should work and let you play online with the multiplayer function, or in a single player game with the single player function. There will be some lag the first time you launch the game before it opens because the game is compiling all of the code files that will be used while it is running. You should also be able to delete or remove the build folder if you want, because the original Warcraft 3 game that you downloaded is not being used when you play this. Now we can hack some game files to make sure that we have full control of everything on the screen. For example, let us change the menu artwork and music to something custom, to celebrate that this is a super moddable version of Warcraft 3. I was forgetting the file path to the Night Elf Archer background, but I think the Night Elf Archer background is a cool example to use. If you forget like me, instead of scrolling through the file a lot, maybe it is easier to do a search for the file you want. I am also replacing the Frozen Throne music with the Reign of Chaos music, to change things up a bit.
That was cool, but I also want to remove that really annoying wind noise from the Frozen Throne menu, so I will change that one to match the Night Elf menu background sound instead. It is fun that everything worked and I was able to change the config file to change the menu and music, but if you are a Warcraft 3 mod maker you already know that you can do the same stuff on the Frozen Throne 2003 game anyway. So, now we can try to get more creative and do something that only this version with all the code can do. For example, there is a bug on this version with a dumb stupid rock that is intersecting with my menu art. We can go into the file and call the function to clear depth buffer between drawing the background scene and the foreground UI, so let us do that. First we go into the core source folder where the code is, and go into the directory with the program code defining what a 3D scene is. This file is highly based on the Hive model viewer, with a few changes. In this file there is a render method that defines how a 3D scene will render. There are two scenes in the menu the background world with a camera projection and 3D model, and then secondly the orthographic UI scene that is on top. We can already see that in the start frame function before render, when we are about to render a scene, there is already a call to clear the OpenGL depth buffer on the start of the frame. So, how can the UI scene that is on top accidentally read the depth information from the projected world behind it? Well, it turns out that this depth func state flag needs to be enabled in order for us to clear the depth buffer. So, we can actually just move it from the non-alpha opaque scene code into the general case, and this will make the alpha scenes like our UI scene still discard depth information from the world behind them. Now, as you can see, we have fixed the annoying rock, and hopefully this makes it clear to you how you have full control over all the code that is happening here in this game simulation. If you followed the tutorial this far, now I will give you a challenge. See if you can use the code to add a couple of extra custom playable factions into this game, which requires you to update the JAS scripts for spawning the units into the world but also update the game engine constants for available dropdown items. The example server for multiplayer already supports any arbitrary integer to represent the faction, so if you implement your faction correctly it should be possible to play your faction with friends in the multiplayer. I was able to get an example like this going in about an hour, but it is outside the scope of this tutorial video for now. Happy modding! Maybe you could also make a better loading screen, since that is missing on the Warsmash engine. 